I wanted to talk a little bit today about whether or not you have to give up all meat, right? Because what I've been saying is, you know, there are potential detrimental effects to meat, to a lot of meat consumption. And I think that's, I still think that's true, you know, and I think, I think it's, it's nuanced and I'll talk about that in a second, but I want to talk about whether it's better to have absolutely no meat, you know, is it better to go 100% vegan or even, you know, very vegetarian? Um, and my argument is that it's better to have some meat in your diet than none. And I'm talking within reason and within certain parameters, but this is the um, Adventist Health Study 2. To my knowledge, this is the latest one. I don't know if they've done another one. But I just want to look at the results here. So we're starting here at the adjusted haz hazard ratio, HR. Hazard ratio is basically how hazardous, you know, uh, for all cause mortality, how hazardous is whoop, your diet. And so in vegans, the hazard ratio was 0.85 in the study. That's actually really good because the hazard ratio was, ratio was 0.88 for all vegetarians. So vegans were even lower than the average for all of them. Lacto ovos were 0.91, still very good. Pesco vegetarians, 0.81. Remember that because that is lower than 0.85 and semi-vegetarians 0.92. So the, the pesco vegetarians are lower than anyone else. They're doing better than anyone else. And I want you to look at the criteria for a minute on what they consider a pesco vegetarian. So this was based on self-reported food. Um, food consumption, which obviously is not the best thing. There's flaws to every study. Every study, okay, has flaws, has weaknesses, let's say. Um, but I want to look at here. The vegans consumed eggs slash dairy, fish, and all other meats less than one time per month, less than a time per month. So maybe once a month, but some months not once a month. Lacto-ovo vegetarians consumed egg dairy one time per month or more. So they were kind of allowed to eat as much eggs and milk as they pleased. But fish and all other meats less than one time a month. I would consider less than one time a month like almost zero. But anyway, it's not nothing. The Pesco vegetarians consumed fish one time per month or more. That's the only criteria, one time per month or more. So you can be eating fish every day, three times a day if you want, <laughs> if you're a pesco vegetarian, but all other meats less than one time a month. So pretty much nothing else but fish. But fish was liberal, it sounds like. They could, they could eat it every day. And semi-vegetarians, non-fish meats, one time per month or more. So they could eat, I don't know, I don't know, um, non-fish meats one time per month or more and all meats combined fish included one time per but no more than one time per week okay so the semi-vegetarians were somewhat limited because they could not eat it more than one time per week whereas the pesco vegetarians could be eating it one time per week twice one time per day no no limitations there and the non-vegetarians Consume non-fish meats one time a month per more, and all meats combined, fish included, more than, more than one time a week. So they were eating meat and stuff on a regular basis, but obviously mixed meat, not just fish. I think this is important because I think, as I've said in my other videos, the quality of the fats in your meat is going to determine whether or not you can eat it liberally. Um, somewhat liberally, I mean, this fish, they're eating pretty liberally. And I think it really depends on the fats. But let's just look at another study. So this is meat intake and cause specific mortality, a pooled analysis of Asian prospective cohort studies. So uh, obviously a bunch of studies that they pooled together, or maybe three it looks like here. Um, yeah, that they're looking at an overall picture here. 
So, oh, eight Asian prospective cohort studies. Oops, up here, the eight's up here. And from different places in Asia, Bangladesh, China, Japan, Korea, Taiwan. And then they looked at cardiovascular disease, cancer, different things. And they used hazard ratios again. And the results are red meat was consumption was substantially lower in Asian countries. I think this is a very important point. It doesn't mean they were consuming it liberally. They were consuming it, um, especially red meat, in lower quantities uh, than in the United States. Fish and seafood, however, was higher in Japan and Korea than in the United States. And their analysis found no association between total meat, red meat, poultry, and fish, and risk of all-cause CVD or cancer mortality among men or women. And hazard, hazard ratio um, were 1 and 0.93, 1, 1 1.02 in men, 0.93 in, in women. So th they're comparing different things though. So, And so in conclusion, um, it found that total meat intake provided um, did not provide evidence of a higher risk for mortality for total meat intake and provided evidence of an inverse association with red meat, which means the more red meat some people ate, the, the better they did. <laughs> Poultry and fish, seafood. But again, I think bec the reason this is contrasting to North American studies is the quality of what they're eating, the quality of fats that their meat has, and also um, the fact that they don't eat the amounts of at least red meat that we do in North America, but fish again is liberal. So this is another interesting study and it talks about Wagyu beef consumption, not detrimental to heart health. This is just an article, so take it for, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But I believe, <laughs> I have my, my reasons why I think that possibly they showed no difference and that's because they kept it, whoops, they kept it to 500 grams, oops, in total, I can't highlight it here. Um, 500 grams in total, you see it, it's right there. And they compared Wagyu um, beef, pasture-raised Wagyu beef to grain-fed beef. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter because grain-fed and pasture-raised have very similar, sim similar fat profiles. But anyway, they kept it to 500 grams in total a week, three times a week, that's not very much. And again, at the bottom, it highlights that study again, a 2012 Japanese study in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition. I believe this is the one that I've referenced in other videos, but they found that there's no link between red meat consumption up to 100 grams per day and higher risk of CV-related deaths, whereas a separate Harvard study found no link for unprocessed red meat consumption and heart disease or diabetes. And I don't know anything about that study. I don't know how much they were using, but it looks like 100 grams per day seems pretty safe for the average person, at least of typical red beef. So again, I think it really has to do with the fat composition of your meat. I've gone over this in other videos. Wild game has a much different fat composition than beef. It is not equal. If you want to see those videos, you'll find them. They're not far away. So look those up, you will see that the difference is polyunsaturated fats, PUFAs, these things that we're told to avoid by a lot of gurus lately. And to me, you need PUFAs in your meat to counteract any ill effects of meat. And this is just um, an article on the Japan Society for Lipid Nutrition recommending to in reduce the intake of linoleic acid. That's omega-6. We're told here in North America to increase omega-6, increase omega-6. Um, they're actually telling people to reduce omega-6. And the reason is, uh, they say down here, we would like to remind the non-Japanese readers that the recommended daily intake of LA, linoleic acid, discussed below, might be applicable only for those whose intake of omega-3 fatty acids is comparable to those of average Japanese, 2.6 grams a day as a total, including one gram of EPA plus DHA. This level is probably enough for preventative purposes, and we did not argue for further increasing omega-3 intake in healthy subjects. So this to me, this is what it's 
says to me is that if you're eating a PUFA, whether it be omega-3 or omega-6, this is gonna counteract any negative effect of your meat. Wild, um, I believe it's deer and elk, are very high in, not very, I get criticized for saying very high. They're high, I would say, in linoleic acid compared to beef. Yes, they're lean, but their fat is higher in linoleic acid, omega-6, omega-6, not three. It's like 30% or something of the fat, even in the organs. Look at my other video, even in the organs, there is a lot of PUFA, PUFA. <laughs> um, so like I said before, I believe that these re the reason we have these lower intakes of red meat necessary to keep some people from having heart disease is because of the quality of the fats in the red meat. There's more monounsaturated fats and more saturated fat and um, like neg not very much PUFAs. And that is the issue. You're better off eating fish. You're better off eating maybe chicken or a different game, wild game, that's gonna have higher PUFA to counteract any of those negative effects. And then I believe you can eat it fairly liberally up to maybe a certain point, but probably higher than 100 grams a day at that point because you're getting the fats that you need. Anyway, that's my thought. And so I do think that um, looking at the first two studies, it showed that actually including some animal products was more beneficial than not including animal products. And potentially my hypothesis is the quality of the fats in the animal products actually makes them better, like a, like a health um, superfood, if you will, to because you're getting way more nutrition from that than taking like a B12 supplement that on a vegan diet. So you're going to be getting that extra boost and better quality fats in your diet. And then you can outlive the vegans, guys. But you got to do it properly and stop listening to these gurus who are telling you to eat the saturated fat. That's not the, in my, in my opinion, that's not the way. You need to focus on the PUFA content in your meat. Get it up there. And then you may actually have a more beneficial diet than a vegan. But am I saying that a carnivore, like high PUFA diet would work, like all fish? I wouldn't do that. I think you'd get mercury poisoning. Um, am I saying that I still think you, you might need some fruit or some plants of some kind in your diet? Maybe some sweet potatoes. Anyway, this video is getting long. That's what I have to say. I think it's actually better to keep some meat in Make sure it's good quality.